So thanks uh, again for the opportunity to be here with you this afternoon to talk uh, about essential use. So this is our task right now to define the criteria. An important starting point for us has been the report uh, from our contractor that was published in April last year. And you have a reference there if you want to read it, if it's, you're not uh, still familiar with it. This report contains the outcome from the project with feedback from stakeholder consultations. So how should we understand the criteria for essential uses in the chemicals strategy for sustainability? The chemicals strategy sets uh, two cumulative criteria that provide the basis for the development of the concept. So most harmful chemicals will only be allowed if, and here comes the two criteria, first, the use is necessary for health or safety or is critical for the functioning of society. And second, cumulative criteria, there are no alternatives that are acceptable from the standpoint of environment and health. So we are currently developing the elements that are needed for demonstrating that the use is essential. For example, what would be considered necessary for health and safety? In general, we would consider that healthcare is fundamental for society. But not all uses of a most harmful substance may be necessary for healthcare treatments or purposes. For example, a certain most harmful substance might be necessary for certain uses at hospitals or laboratories, but not for consumer use. So, deciding what is essential use will have to go through a stepwise approach. The first step is looking at the scope. Does the essential use concept apply to me? If the substance is one of the most harmful chemicals for which phasing out is a priority, and the substance is used on its own, in a mixture or in an article, it replies yes. The concept applies to the substance. The second step is the assessment itself. Here you can see some questions that are examples of considerations which may indicate the necessity of use for health or safety. And these are elements that you can also find in the report that I was referring to before. Is the function provided by the substance in use necessary to, for example, prevent, monitor, or treat severe health issues, or sustain basic conditions for human life and health, such as food, water, shelter, security? Is it necessary to manage health crises and emergencies? Is it necessary to ensure the functioning of components necessary for personal safety? Here, again, I put some examples of what could be cases of critical for functioning of society. So is the function provided by the substance in the considered use critical to the functioning of components necessary for or critical for a certain infrastructure, or critical to providing clean water or energy, or critical to managing crises and emergencies? If the, question, if the reply to questions such as these ones is yes, then we move to the second criteria, which is the assessment of alternatives. And the questions that we could be posing ourselves here are, are, the alternatives, are there alternatives that can provide the same function? It could be another chemical. It could be another technology, a redesign of the product. Sometimes it could be just nothing. What level of performance is needed if an alternative does not provide exactly the same function? Perhaps a partial function could work for that particular use. Is the alternative acceptable from the point of view of health and environment? Or is this regrettable substitution? Are we looking at the same type of, of, of substance? So if there are acceptable alternatives, the use is therefore not essential for society. If the use is critical for the function of society, it's necessary for health or safety, and there are no acceptable alternatives, then the use could be declared essential for society. In these cases, we could conceive exemptions from uh, restrictions, uh, derogations from authorizations. That would depend on the piece of legislation that would implement the concept. What I would just refer to, for example, could apply to REACH. However, 
and this is also very present in the Montreal Protocol, this can be done with conditions. We can set conditions for the use, for the emissions, minimization of exposure, etc. Of course, as you would understand, some of these questions are not fixed in time, and they evolve. And that's very much the case uh, when, uh, when you are doing uh, an analysis of alternatives. And those of you that are engaged in this exercise, which is not new with the essential use uh, concept, but you have been doing for a long time, in particular if you were uh, doing authorizations under which you know that uh, things evolve over time, and, and the analysis evolves over time, and therefore it will be necessary to review the conclusion uh, later on. I think an important element of, uh, of the essential use concept is the definition of, of use. Um, and it's something that has given place to many discussions uh, with stakeholders, but also internally in the, in the Commission. Is the essential use, because the essential use concept, use concept applies to the uses of substances on their own in mixtures or, or, or in articles. And to, able, to be able to assess the essentiality of a particular use of a substance, you will need to look at both the technical function of the substance in the particular use, and whether the technical function provided by the substance in, is, is what that technical function provided by the substance is in the end use, in the end product, and whether this is essential for society. So um, a substance, therefore, could be, essential, uh, could be essential to use in one product, but not in another. And I think I referred to in the, in the case of healthcare, I gave uh, some examples that we could conceive from our side. So um, as a conclusion, uh, the European Commission, we want to improve the protection of health and environment by phasing out the presence of the most harmful substances in consumer products and in some professional uses. We want to do so via the generic approach, but uh, a use that is essential for society can be exempted from, uh, from restrictions. We also want to mobilize industry to invest into safer chemicals and avoid regrettable substitution. We are in the process of defining the criteria for what can be considered an essential use, but also the guiding uh, questions to help this assessment that I just explained to you, which as you can see, could be rather complex. There are rather technical considerations, uh, purely focusing on circumstances of the particular use and of the particular harmful substance. So it's not an assessment that it can be done um, simplified for all harmful substances and for all and for all uses, and it can be can become quite uh, quite specific. Uh, for the time being, we don't have any timeline for our proposal. We have uh, concluded discussions internally in the Commission, and we are looking into the the. Um, the ways were concluded. We are still finalizing the discussions in the Commission and uh, looking at the best opportunity to, uh, to publish our, um, our criteria. Uh, hopefully we can do it uh, soon enough, but for the time being, uh, I cannot give you any, any timeline for, for it. Thank you very much.